Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So a few months ago, while doing some suspension work on my 4Runner, I developed a recurring problem with the vehicle going into limp mode. Uh, the multi-terrain select would uh, flash, it would say it was unavailable, and I uh, was limited to about uh, 35 miles an hour. But I was able to use my scan gauge to clear the codes, and then it would operate normally, but I would have to do this every morning. So a few weeks ago, I took it to the local uh, Toyota place, decided to go ahead and let them run the codes uh, because my diagnostic machine wouldn't get deep enough to uh, diagnose the problem. They called me later in the day to say, hey, your vehicle's ready. And oh, by the way, those uh, codes are a P2441 and a P2443. And those are, uh, the valves are closed on your SAIS, and uh, that's going to cost about $2,000. And I was like, oh, geez, man, my freaking heart attack. My God, that's expensive. I, I told him, I said, well, thank you for letting me know. Uh, so now I'm going to do some research on it and see what uh, the cheapest way for me to go about doing this. So I uh, went, picked up the vehicle. Uh, before I left, uh, the service manager was trying to call me. So anyway, he's like, he catches me and uh, he's like, hey, do not replace that. He says, there's a company called Hewitt Technologies. Uh, they make a bypass module for it. He said, uh, it's going to be about a quarter of the cost of, uh, of replacing all that other stuff. Doesn't hurt your emissions. It doesn't hurt your motor. Uh, there's no reason not to do that. Um, I thanked him for that solid advice. Uh, he said it takes about 20 minutes or so to install, and that's even better. So without further ado, let's get into it, and I'll show you how quick and easy it is to fix your SAIS problem with your Toyotas. They do come with full instructions. Uh, I do want to note that uh, they say that a failure of any component of the SAIS will generally set the check engine light on. This doesn't have to be 100% functioning, so there could be a component that's in it. The only thing that has to be operational is you at least have to have one good air switching valve. Now, if your air switching valves are what is um, wrong, you can not order their pressure sensor option, and you can order it and put that in. You only have to have one actually functioning. I believe I read that correctly. I'm just going by memory. Uh, this bypass will work. Anyway, so you got that. If you've got any questions or anything, you can put there. You can put a little pin. Um, that is what we're gonna have. That's the AID replacement. And we have new screws to attach the AID to the bracket and the block off plates. And I believe that is a cap for the red and black power wire that would normally connect to the factory unit. Let's uh, disconnect the battery. Then we're gonna move on to uh, step one. All right, so after disconnecting your negatives battery cable, or in my case, removing the batteries completely, and honestly, I think I'm gonna have to get over here here in a minute anyway. So having the battery out of the way gives me more room. I would have been a little tight. So first things first, we are going to remove the engine cover and then we'll proceed to step two, or actually step three. Well, you get the idea. That's just as simple as lifting up on the front until it clears the tabs at the back and then it just pulls forward. All right, so we're gonna be removing uh, these two connectors here, completely free of the AID. After we get everything disconnected here, I'm uh, going to uh, be removing this bracket actually from the fender. I'm assuming that's what this little cap is for, is to uh, cap this to keep from accidentally arcing out since there will be power to here. They recommend either pulling the fuse or breaking the fuse for that supplies power to the AID or using black tape um, or leaving it connected. But I believe that that's what this is actually for now. So you can just undo it, cap it and forget it. Sweet. This is actually, this will not be used again. And I will 
probably go over that additionally with some black tape just to make sure it stays that way. And then uh, we will just tuck it back out of the way. I hate these factory plugs. All right, I couldn't get that loose, so I'm just gonna get it up at eye level where I can kind of see it, um, at least be able to turn it around a little bit. And uh, basically, it's just held in with a 10 millimeter bolt, the bracket is. So I'm just gonna release the bolt, kind of be able to it, turn it where I can see the back side of it uh, a little bit better, and then uh, try to get that to release. All right, we got it free. And it's just got some uh, grime and buildup. All right, finally, finally released. What does release mean? Released is this has a little pin right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this has a little release right here. So when you push this little tab in, it releases it from here. But sometimes you get dirt and grime built up around there and you can't push it down far enough to move it so you kind of have to wiggle it back and forth until you get it off all right got the aid out power is capped and we are going to have to now remove with a screwdriver these two screws and then we will attach our bypass in there so that's on to where are we at now step four step five Which direction do you go? Mm -mm. Left? There you go. Get it out. You can probably turn it with your hand now. Okay, set it aside. There you go. Let's get this one. The other way. Thank you. All right. Set your screwdriver down. Remove your bracket. Cool. All right. This is an AID. Okay. Got the Denso number there on it, and uh, we're gonna just set this aside. Now what? What are uh, we doing now? Mm, What's next? No. No, not walkie talkies. <laughs> walkie talkie. No. All right. Listen. Uh, we need we need this. What is this? Put kind those down. We don't need them yet. What are those kind of plastic? They're zip. They're zip ties. Mm. Okay. All right. You got these. We're not gonna need anymore. So let's put those over now, there. That's your hand. No, it's not my hand. Who's that hand? Well, that's the Hewitt Technologies hands. Mm -hmm. That's their instructions. Step six is to put their new bypass module relay I onto here. All right, so that's gonna go on here, like so. And we have some provided, remember where we put the screws? Oh yeah, right here. Okay, now uh, once you get that down to a point, uh, that is captive, so it's uh, hex, you can see that's hex indention there, so you're going to be like that. Just hold it, and then we're going to take the, take the space out of it, and then if you have an assistant helping you, can't can, wait to get them. You can let them finish. There you go. <laughs> I did I can you Now you're going the opposite direction this time. Here, let's be careful with it, okay? No, the uh, other way. Whoa. I'll hold it. I'll hold it. That's good. That's good. That's good. You got that on top. I'm good? Okay. Yeah. All right, you want to be very careful not to over tighten. Those are just plastic ears that are on there and you don't want to uh, to crack that or anything. So just nice and snug that will keep it. Uh, now we are going to use our original bolt and we are going to bolt it back into the vehicle. Mm-hmm. Some days. 
Mm -hmm. Some days. Some days, yeah. Like right now, you're yeah, yeah. I'm feeling it. You're not old. I'm not. Are you sure about that? No, but you're going to be. Hmm. Going to make a crown and a wobble. Okay, flowers. Get the gas bowl and put the flowers in. I make a four for the five. Mounted. Random ground wire reattached all right uh we are going to attach the factory plug here to this all right and so now the uh, wiring harness that they provide will start here and then it will go around to the other four connections that it will make. This little six pin connector is gonna be where it starts and then we'll go over what you're gonna actually hook the rest of this into. All right, I'm uh, gonna unhook here just so I can route this a little bit better. Uh, the direction that they want you to take is to obviously start here, go around the back of the master cylinder. You've got this little little section here should fall right about this point. And then we're going to run uh, just along the back of the intake over uh, to the other side to bank two. That'll keep it out of the way. And then we can kind of, after we get it all mocked up, we can uh, zip tie everything. You're going to be connecting in here and we'll uh, get a better look at that once we get our wire ran the way we want it to. That's why I'm uh, gonna feed it through like this. to get a little bit better look here. Uh, so we basically just went behind the master cylinder. We went under these coolant pops here. We're gonna be going right here. Then we continued on over this way and then we'll finish over on the passenger side. All right, so basically we're gonna remove this factory connector right here. Their plug is gonna plug into the air switching valve. And then, I'm not gonna lie, if you've got big hands, that is obviously a little bit. Oh, oh, oh. That appears to be seated all the way. All right. So, I can get a little bit different angle here. All right. Factory pigtail connects into their unit, their harness, and then the female pigtail connects to the factory auto switching valve, air switching valve. So that actually just, uh, now you're in line and everything, and we're gonna go do the exact same thing over on the passenger side. Last thing we're going to use is the block off plates and we're going to be using a 10 millimeter. We're going to loosen these off. There is a gasket between here. They recommend possibly using some PB blaster. I've got a little bit of that. So I may uh, use that or deep creep or something like that. And on the driver's side, in the same spot, right here. So what we're gonna do is loosen that far enough to pry that back a little bit. 
This obviously is a little bit more, you've got some flexibility there uh, with that, uh, but uh, that's gonna give us enough room to slide these, which will just drop in, get tightened up, and they will seal perfectly fine. Uh, you will leave your gasket intact. These are two different sizes here. You will only use one, and they have a little disclaimer here that says, for the four layer, you will have, you will only use one pair of exhaust valve block off plates for this installation. This kit comes with two different sizes because there are differences in the engine. And they also include a diagram of the two separate styles. And now we're gonna start on the passenger side to put these block off plates on. And uh, what we're gonna do is you can see the tabs here from the little metal gasket that sits in here. You can barely see the corners of those tips there. Uh, but we're going to back these bolts off just far enough to slip the, black, the, uh, the backing plate in there and then we'll tighten it back up. Proceed to the driver's side and then we will be able to start it up and see if we've cleared our codes and check for leaks. That is after we get the batteries back in there. All right, so these are uh, relatively thin. We uh, should just be able to just uh, slide those directly in there. You are going to put this directly up against the valve and then the gasket will then now ride right up next to this. sufficiently down in there easier than I thought it would be oh let me find my uh, 10 millimeter that just fell down there on the frame somewhere and uh, we'll get that side tightened up so we've got it all tightened back up uh, you can see just the uh, the corner of that uh, gasket sticking up there and it's also clipped in the rest of it looks pretty good there so uh, the, those two bolts were not in there very tight at all um, so I just went back just a, about a quarter of a turn past tight. Have any kind of a leak or anything, we'll just hit it again, tighten it up one more time. All right, we got a little bit more in the way on this side. It's still pretty manageable. So you can get a, and as I said, those aren't in there very tight. So once you break them loose, you can just kind of, you can get at them with your fingers. Sorry, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't free up enough space to film dropping this one in there, but I'm just making sure that uh, I've got it in there all the way. All right, so we've got that one in. Uh, we'll get these bolts tightened back up, and we're done. They include a couple of zip ties to put their wiring harness in here. I chose to give this a little bit of relief and then uh, go back, use the engine wiring harness here, and ran it right along the top of the intake. Then we get over to this area here. Uh, we're going back around the back of the master cylinder, and I just kept it up out of the way in one spot right here, and everything else just seems to be kinda, I can live with it. Let's, uh. Get the batteries back in, get the engine cover back on, and we'll start it up and make sure we don't have any any leaking or anything. All right, so we've got it all buttoned back up here, and uh, I guess that just leaves us to the last step, and that's to crank it up, make sure we don't have any crazy check engine lights on or anything like that, check for exhaust leaks, and we'll be completed with the Hewitt Technologies Gen 2 S-A-I-S bypass. It's a very simple. Um, it's it's actually uh, went quite quick. Uh, 
I had a little help earlier that slowed me down. Um, but uh, beyond that, uh, trying to film and do everything, I mean, you could probably knock this out in about probably 20 minutes, 30 minutes, if you're taking your time. Uh, run into any kind of, I mean, I couldn't see it taking really more than an hour at all. Um, now, I say that I live in the South. I don't have to deal with a lot of rusty bolts or anything like that on those uh, on those valves. Your experience may be different than mine, but it was uh, very straightforward. The directions are solid. They are very good. And again, this will hopefully eliminate the limp mode associated with the SAIS. Looking good. Let's start her up. Well, wasn't anticipating that. For whatever reason, uh, that and just basically like an intermittent no start. Uh, my power's now working on the, the battery loop over here. I, uh, I was throwing a uh, 353 and a 354 ignition coil. I cleared the codes and we're uh, we're good to go as time will tell all right so we threw uh p o 353 po354 i was in the garage we cleared that no problem was backing out of the driveway we threw 351 and 352 no problem uh it cleared started right up and it ran for about four minutes just far enough for me to get out of the neighborhood across the road <laughs> and i am now currently unable to get it started again no ability to see what uh, what actually is the issue check all my connections i guess that's the only thing you think of it's got to be something i mean it's just so we're gonna hold off on uh, wrapping this video up until we uh, get to the bottom of it first thing in the morning as long as the boogeyman doesn't get me out here Kind of lonely anyway i wanted to wait much longer I'm only about a half a mile from the house as the crow flies so get there here in a second and uh gonna sleep on it see if i can figure out what's going on <laughs> now i'm not getting any code at all i've cleared what trouble codes were left in there i guess and uh i still i have not a chance of this thing starting it just uh it cranks but uh we just will not start just uh really perplexed i've got uh plenty of plenty of gas uh i'm just not getting anything to ignite for me um i called hewitt and i was kind of afraid with it throwing a cool code that that was probably not going to be uh anything to do with uh with their with their bypass kit um he's uh sending me an email very helpful we kind of just talked through everything uh my original codes obviously were uh for the sais uh be, the valves being stuck shut it ran uh for <laughs> for a little bit so uh i just think there's just something uh there's just something i'm just missing Let me try to start it one more time just to be on the safe side. And it cranked and it's been running for about five minutes. Uh, no issues, no sputtering, nothing. Fast forward a few days, uh, the uh, everything was fine. Everything after the uh, the initial hiccup with it trying to start. I, this would have been Thursday night, so it would have been three days after it had been installed. Everything had been functioning perfectly. Um, went to uh, a friend's house. We'd driven probably a total of about 70 miles on it all week long. And uh, then we get into, um, I drive, uh, it's a 20 minute continuous drive. So it's about the longest I had driven were leaving and I was coming down a hill. It had been running for probably about uh, three or four minutes and it hesitated, went right back into the uh, limp mode. Um, I just, I kinda just thought, well, let me see if it'll stay in limp mode 
uh, at some point in time, it uh, the, the pedal came back. I was able to drive normally, still with everything. The dash was lit up. Uh, drove about another uh, 10, 10 miles or so. Had my scan gauge, cleared the codes. Um, thought, okay, I'm going to have to get a big, bigger, I'll have to get a better diagnostic machine and actually see what codes it's actually throwing since it seemed like it did exactly what it did uh, previously to putting the bypass in there. So the next day, started up, no check engine light, it starts, uh, runs through its normal cycle. We uh, drive to work. Uh, somewhere around midday, starts up normally. Uh, about a minute into my drive, I felt it hesitate again. I thought, well, it's going to do like it did last night. I'll end up having full operation here in just a second, but uh, let me just kind of keep going. And, uh, I, you know, had full throttle. Uh, it was driving normally. Uh, I get to uh, go through a red light, and as soon as I let off the gas, it literally had died. It died. I could not get it started, so I had to, uh, to get it uh, towed. Uh, this whole scenario, I cranked and cranked and cranked and cranked. I cleared the codes, everything in the world to try to get it to start. It would not start. Um, get it off the tow truck, and it literally fired right up. And so, cleared the, uh, cleared the, uh, left the codes in there. I thought, okay, now I'm just going to check my, check my grounds, disconnected the battery, let it sit for a few minutes, put the battery connection back on, got that tight, um, started up, no, no codes, no anything. It runs for probably about five minutes, gets up to operating temperature, and then it just out of nowhere, it just dies. Try to start it back up. Again, it's giving me all the codes in the world, uh, just like it was uh, previous, except it just does not start now. Uh, multi, uh, multi-function, um, multi-terrain select is unavailable. Uh, the hill descent control is lighting up. It's doing all the, all the things are illuminated. Uh, so at this point, I've got a better diagnostic machine. I'm gonna run some codes real quick, and then I'm gonna get with Derek, with Hewitt tomorrow, and just see if we can get to the bottom of it, because I have a feeling that maybe one of those valves may be defective. Hey guys, I think that we have finally got to the bottom of what was making it die and then not restart. Okay, so I noticed that I was getting, this was just black. So there was no uh, no power to it. Uh, I have the film ran through, like I said, a relay. I use the key on so I activate the relay to give me a powered ground if that makes sense and so my powered ground uh, wasn't wasn't working so I had no juice no hot wire coming out of that and if I don't have a hot wire coming out of that to produce something here then I'm not powering my injectors so that very well could be what's giving my misfire or the or the uh, uh, the problem with uh, showing that I have a coal issue and it's that gum sure not gonna start Opening up the relay box, I realized that I had a add a tap that wasn't properly seated in the fuse box. And now I determined at this point that that was what was killing the power to the injectors and possibly causing it to not restart. All right, guys, and there you have it. So sometimes you just have to just slow down to start back over at the very beginning and just kind of think through. Like, you know, these things usually are uh, pretty clear. Uh, sometimes you just have to uh, just slow down and uh, process all the information and don't be so quick to just be like, oh, I've got some other issue. Last night when I hooked everything back up, started it, it ran, no codes, and I have a real diagnostic machine so I can actually see all this. Uh, it ran for about six to seven minutes and it died so i came out and i uh, checked there was a um a code that was present and it was uh 1603 and it's engine stall so i'm like okay let's let's start it see if it starts which it wouldn't if it would die before it would not restart so it started no problem i left uh left the code it just i think it self-cleared maybe I, i'm i'm i don't think i even cleared it it runs for maybe two minutes at this point and it dies again so i'm okay um uh, same thing 1603 we started at that point it started to run beautifully <laughs> after that and i think that for a little bit it was rough rough 
running it was just kind of a rough idle here and there but i think it was because it had gotten so confused cutting the fuel and everything that you know i don't know i'm just <laughs> I'm talking it through uh so it very well could have been just having to relearn recalibrate after it started it the third time uh we've had no codes uh no sais codes at all um they're gone they're completely gone this time uh so maybe with it running poor before uh it didn't completely kill those codes I, you know i just don't know but uh, i do know right now we are good i'm going to give it the green light to uh, just watch it for a few days and uh, hopefully boogers never come back he did say though that uh if we continue to have some sort of an issue that i probably have uh damaged my, my valves are just bad uh which i agree with but the fact that we ran perfect for three days before and then started having issues again i just i really think it was back to the add a tap on um the 10 amp fuse on the injector and the underhood fuse compartment because you know all these other things just uh did not work and uh that's just kind of what leads me to believe that was just giving it uh an issue with it uh running properly uh, and giving me uh, a false diagnosis on the cools and the misfire. So get your Hewitt Technologies Bypass. It's easy to put, install. Just watch your grounds. Just make sure that you have, uh, you start with a clean slate when you um, let it do its reconfiguring of the computer. And, and remember, we've got a lot of returning viewers that haven't subscribed yet. So please hit that subscribe button and we will see you later. Thank you guys so much. Please check out some of our other videos before you go.